Where'd that workout go? Shoulders plus core. Oh, there we go. Hello, everyone. I love how it was almost late too. <laughs> Four elements fitness. Admit. Uh, Four. Okay. okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. I think I'm gonna myself on you. Let's see. Okay, good. No. Do you guys still hear an echo? No? There should be two of me. Oh, there I there's my other person. I might be down there in the cameras. I think I need a okay, that's connected. Yay. We'll give it a few more minutes to see if anybody else joins, but it looks like for the most part, we have all the regulars. I can't hear anybody though, so. Oh no, you guys are all muted. That's why I can't. I'm super smart. <laughs> Everybody's muted. So. Okay. There. Make sure you guys can see everything. So today, you won't need any equipment. I was smart enough to design this workout to be completely body weight. I'm going to pat myself on the back for that. 
but we will be working on mostly um, shoulder strength uh, work today. So uh, it's going to be a lot of stamina and endurance by just holding and bracing with our core and our upper body. So the um, exercises we'll be um, working on today, we're going to start off with some burpees. Yay, everybody loves burpees. Um, and then <laughs> Michelle's like, no. <laughs> uh, we're going to start off with some burpees to get our heart rate up. Um, and then we're going to lead into uh, Renegade Rose and then um, follow through with more core exercises to end it off. And we're actually going to, this is kind of a short one, so we'll repeat this whole exercise twice. So we'll be doing the exercises um, um, twice in a row, build up as I usually do. And then the ending part will be just core. And then we're going to repeat again for a full 30 minute uh, work, metabolic workout. So today's gonna be a little different cause I am a little bit behind in my, my work. So I'm gonna start it off today with a conversation. So today is, this week will actually be Jackie's week so far as jujitsu is concerned. Um, we're gonna be doing, bringing back hallway jujitsu again on Wednesday. Everybody seeming to like Wednesdays at 5 p.m. so far. So I'm not dictating the schedule. You guys are all dictating the schedule for a hallway jujitsu or lecture class. And lately, the next four Wednesdays, it's all going to be at, uh, or this is the third Wednesday and the fourth Wednesday um, was just Michelle. Next week is all going to be at uh, 5 p.m. for hallway jujitsu. So um, I'm just going to pull up Jackie, Jackie's um, information that she filled out for what she's looking for forward to learning in our class. Does anybody have any questions before we get started today? Anything that's nagging? Um, I know Tirza, you said that you are having some stiffness and your neck and shoulders this week. Is that correct? Feel free to bring yourself off mute. That is correct. Okay. Okay. So um, is it pain or is it just tightness? I'm getting a full night's sleep and I'm waking up sore. So um, I don't have COVID. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just getting older. I'm like, I think I'm just sitting at a desk daily and like, you know, it's probably just general stiffness, right? Um, yeah, it could be general stiffness. You don't feel injured or at all? Or do you just feel tired and kind of, you know how I, this happens to me when I sleep is, um, I feel sickness in my neck and, um, Sometimes it, ha it has a lot to do with how you sleep. Um, I'm going to use my foam roller. So I tend to sleep kind of wonky. Um, and I mean, I guess I can force myself to sleep differently, but it's difficult because your body kind of falls into where you feel comfortable. So I'm a, I'm a side sleeper. So I'll sleep like this and I'll sleep on my shoulder with my um, shoulder forward. So I'm gonna point my camera down. So I kind of, I tend to sleep like this and then on my, um, on the side of my body. And usually my, my neck is not even this elevated. It's usually like, kind of like this. So you can sit, see just by the position of my neck that my body is, when I wake up in the morning, I'm probably gonna be stiff. And for me, this is breathing because I actually have um, some respiratory issues. So if I sleep on my back, which is going to be better for posture with your head just slightly elevated and you're able to keep your shoulders down, this will be better for stiffness. But it, not, it might not be better for breathing, um, especially I know I've trained some women who are very, they're gifted up here. And so just lying on their backs is actually 
causes um like the weight it's from fear is so heavy that it causes like um them to suffocate with on their back so some women really can't sleep like this and i don't know if this is my issue but it does feel uh uncomfortable so well, definitely not my issue <laughs> You're like, that's not that's not my problem. <laughs> I I don't know. I could be sleeping. I don't sleep well in general, so I toss and turn. So I sleep in all different positions possible, basically. Oh, okay. But I yeah. think I'm sitting at a desk every day, and I've been not taking breaks as much lately because we, you know, my productivity shot up because I don't commute anymore. I just commute over from the bed. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just the desk situation, you know. Yeah. So more. Um, more regular foam rolling i think did you invest in those ten tennis balls that we worked on last week oh and i hate the foam roller i'm very anti even though i own the foam roller i it, it i i have a hard time doing it yeah. yeah so try the tennis balls trying to, those peanuts and I like how like a lot of you guys are moving. So if you are hit here and you're just sitting around waiting for me to start the workout as I kind of go through the lecture point of our class, do work on those mobility exercises that we did last week. So I see Kathy, she's doing it. Um, Cha's doing her shoulder warm up. Amy's got a warm up going on. Yeah, Michelle, get on those foam rollers. You guys get on those balls. Jackie, you weren't here last week. So let me just kind of. If you have, Jackie, do you have a foam roller? Uh, do you have a tennis ball? That shirt that Cha's wearing. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm her time dying. If you, if, shirt that says, but did you die? <laughs> if, Jackie, if you're able to invest in, I don't have, I actually don't have my um, balls up here right now, but um, tennis balls, lacrosse balls, or softball, like Michelle showing one up right now on her camera, if you're able to see it. Uh, those things are gonna be really great in relieving a lot of the knots and the tension that you have in your body. So uh, you can start off like Kathy's doing it right now, just rolling on her side, rolling on your shoulders. And since you don't have anything right now, um jackie will work on shoulder cars so shoulder cars look like this i'll point the, i'll look at this camera right now so shoulder cars are here so you can be lying sitting on your knees or standing up and you're going to start with your thumb pointing up and then you're going to raise your hand above your body and then as soon as you try to get your hand as far back with your thumb pointing behind you and you can't go anymore, you'll flip your thumb around. So now my thumb is pointing forward and I'm able to bring my hand all the way back behind my body. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And then when your hand comes down, you're gonna switch to the pinky forward and then you're gonna continue the rotation back and then switch your hands around. There you go. And you're just kind of continuously rolling through. And um, Chad's doing a, a really cool dynamic one with the weight, and then you'll do the other one, right? So some of your questions, you were talking about um, how to shoulder roll, um, what are the different types of shrimping, um, and you asked uh, about what are arm drags which is really good. Uh, you, did, you do arm drag shoots and shoulder rolls in your other classes and you're trying to figure out how you can do them. Um, and this is really, really cool. I, I wanna see if I can get, cause I was just working on arm drags with Kelly uh, this past Friday. And uh, I wanna see if I can get her in our class uh, she might not be able to join Wednesday, but I can at least pass on some of the knowledge that I um, learned from her since we were doing it last week. And a lot of it will have to do with how our ability to drop our weight onto a person. So if you can imagine um, holding on to like those uh, tether balls 
if you were in elementary school, if you ever held onto a tether ball and try to swing yourself around, like swing, like uh, in a circle, like a pole dancer, essentially. <laughs> That's the type of weight that you want to drop onto the person when you're doing the arm drag. They're really, really effective for passing somebody by, or say somebody's trying to put their hand on your shoulder, they're trying to touch you they're trying to put their hand on your shoulder and touch you, you can use that to redirect the person by. In jujitsu, sports application, it's really great to take the person's back, open them up for different types of takedowns. And we'll go over that in our next hallway jujitsu class, which is this uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m. So hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys there. Good job, Jennifer. So yes, beautiful, beautiful movement. So everybody's getting warmed up. So I'm going to quickly uh, bring everybody back and we'll do a few warm ups before our um, class. So let's start with what Kathy's doing right now, which is the shoulder breakers. And I misplaced a lot of my equipment, so I have to use this. So we'll all stand up, all try to stand up. So for those of you guys who can see me, we'll start with shoulder breakers. So you want to grab a uh, rope. If you don't have it, just work on your shoulder cards as I demonstrated for you. We'll pull the rope in front of us. And then we'll just go up, 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 all the way behind the body. I'm gonna let this go. Yeah, good. Let your shoulders drop. And then back. Two, five, just like that. This is two. Really go slowly and take your time pushing the um, rope or device that you have in your hands back. And then when you come to the front, push it forward, forward, forward. And then back again. And this will be three. Roll your neck where you feel tightness. This is four. And then one more. And back. Good. Now, if you have a band in your hand, just go ahead and we'll do our band pull apart to where we're pulling the band apart and then coming back in. Pretend. If you don't have a band, we're going to press up. If you have like a belt or something that's stiff that won't move, we're just going to do pressing up. So we'll be here. We'll hold our rope or um string up and then we'll press up so one pop your chest press up two press up three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine, one more, 10, good. Nice. Now this last one is gonna be fun. We'll be on the floor. We're gonna kind of just roll around. Make sure you guys can see the ground. That's good. Down here, good, awesome. So we're gonna lie on our bellies. And you're gonna kind of have your hands out like a, a Y or your body will look like an X. And then you're gonna really force one hand to the ground and then open up and try to keep your hips flat. So I'm gonna try to keep my hips pressed on the ground as I open up and stretch out as much as I can. Hold and then come back down and we'll do the other side. We'll hold for about five breaths. So pull back, hold, five, four, three, two, one, and then back. We'll do three each side, so this will be two. And then back. Open. And really try to get your thumb or your arm back as far as you can. And then back. Last one. Keep your hips pressed as much as possible. And then back. Good. This last one, we're gonna have our hands out to a T. And this time you're crossing your hips. You're keeping your hands planted on the T and you're crossing your hips um, behind you. And stretching, there you go. And then switch. Switch. Good, switch. Switch, last one. Good, and center. Shake it out. All right. The fun part begins. So, I think I'm going to. Um, quick question for those of you guys who were here two weeks ago when I shared the timer, I shared screen and I shared the timer on the screen. Was that helpful for you or do you prefer not to have it? Were you looking at it? Were you not using it? Does anybody remember when I shared the screen with the timer or no? You, you remember, Cha? Did you like it? Did, was it helpful? I think it was helpful um, to keep track of what we were doing, but it was like, it was like that stack that had like a bunch of stuff though. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it was like helpful, especially cause like some of them had like little icons that showed what, um, what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, like some yeah, if the if an icon was helpful. So okay, I'll share my screen again. I can only do it with my phone, but at least I have this camera so you guys can see what I'm doing still. So which means I need to I don't know, I think I'll be fine. Okay. So get your music, your water ready. We're getting ready to start. Oh wait, I gotta, I gotta share the screen. Is it 
ですね。よいか。ふん。ちょっと待ってくださいね。There we go. That's what I want to see. Okay. Okay, we're starting in 14 seconds. First exercise will be burpees. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, burpee. Renegade rows. So, renegade rows, we're going to be down on our hands like a plank here. And then you don't need a weight if you have one, that's okay. You're just going to row. And I really want you guys to focus on flexing and then placing your hand down so you're moving through this slowly. My palm turns and face forward. And then it goes down. Good. And really squeeze and flex. So I'm really squeezing, slow movement here, flexing down. And then down. Slow, squeezing the back of my shoulder as hard as I can. And back to burpees. Hitting pause. So we're going back to burpees. Ready and go. My palm turns forward. So you're creating an imaginary tension in your body. And rest. we're going to do it again. This time we're adding planks and black, niddle, black widow knee slice. So the planks you're going to do on your elbows. And I really want you to focus as much as you can on protracting your shoulders. So that means pushing the ground away and almost like you're squeezing your elbows together as you're pushing the ground away. So you're here and really pushing out. After that, we're gonna do Black Widow knee slides. They're basically like your knee, Bringing your knee across your body in the plank position. But after you bring your knee across your body, so I'm bringing my knee to my opposite elbow. I'm doing a little crunch at the top and then bringing my knee down. Crunching in, crunching at the top, knee down. You guys got it? Yeah? Let me arrow through. Yeah, got it on this side too? Good. All right. And ready, starting back with the burpees. Five, four, three, two, one, burpees. No. 
everyone. Many great models. Right on your elbows. Black wood on the side. So we're bringing our knee across the body. Break, we're gonna repeat. Burpees. Renegade Rose. It's okay to be on your knees. It's better to have good alignment, which is what I'm practicing right now. And squeezing. Ten, we tend to try to practice our planks from here. Really, we want our shoulders stacked right on top of our wrists. And engaging our core down. Elbow planks. Last little knee slide. This is our last time doing burpees and renegade rows. We're gonna move on to strictly core from here. Great, so we're gonna start this time with the planks and the black widow knee slides, and then we're gonna add in bicycles, toe taps, and V-ups. Starting with your elbow planks. So again, you can be really focused on keeping your shoulders stacked and pushing your upper body away if you need to be on your knees. Be on your knees, engage your core. Little knee slides. Up, down.
bicycle. So I'm hitting pause. When you guys do your bicycles, I want you to do them from the V up. So we're here, shoulders up, legs up, and then we're crossing. Your feet and your shoulders don't touch the ground. So you're not relaxing here. After your uh, bicycles, you're gonna move on to toe taps. So you're gonna stay in a crunch and you're moving side to side. Those are gonna be the toe taps. After the toe taps, we're gonna just hold the V up position. So we're gonna hold up. If you need to bend your knees, you can bend your knees, that's okay. I'll uh, call out if I'm gonna have you guys let your legs fall away or bring them close. All right, ready, starting with the bicycles. And go, bicycles, 20 seconds. Just let your low back touch the ground. And then hollow belly, side to side. Pull your belly button to your spine. And yeah. After this, we're gonna swim. Extend your arms, your legs out as far as you can. Six, five, four, three, two. Swimmers, so we're swimming. On your belly, swim. Clapping behind you, and then back out, clapping in front. Squeeze your butt, thighs off the ground. Boom. You don't gotta kick with your bottom legs. You're just swimming your upper body. Squeeze your butt, keep your thighs off the ground. Elbow plank. And rest. Go ahead, rest. Give you guys a few seconds of rest. I forgot to add a rest into this group. Ready? We're going to start in three, two. Switch it to the next group. One. And Black Widow knee slide. Crunch up, crunch up, cross opposite knee, opposite elbow, and then crunch up. Bicycles, back on your back. Rotate your hips, rotate your shoulders. Rotate your hips, rotate your shoulders. Feet down, toe touches. I like windshield wipering. Pull your belly button to your spine, shoulders off the ground. V up, hold here. Send your legs out as far as you can. Members on your belly. 
popping in front and popping behind. Elbow plank. Rest, 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 rest. Adding in a 15 second rest for y'all. Ready, starting black widow knee slide in three, two, one, black widow knee slide. Twist your hips, twist your shoulders. No touches, no taps. Side to side, hollow belly. V ups, hold. Swimmers, back on your belly. Top and front. Clap behind. Burpees. We're going to finish off with these last few burpees. That's it. Go as far fast and hard as you can. This last few seconds. And time. I'm going to stop it. We're going to call it early today on this workout. Where's my, oh, I think it's because I got to go here. There we go. Am I still sharing? Oh, here we go. All right, y'all. Go ahead in the camera. <laughs> How you guys feeling? A little bit easier workout than normal, but... <sighs> I'm so sweaty. No, that was easier. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's like, I'm sweaty. Yeah. I'm like, my shoulders are uh, not as strong as my lower body. <laughs> so it's a good switch. Um, 
I think I want to spend the next 10 minutes or so just kind of answering some questions for you guys, just finding the lay of the land, where you guys' mindset is, um, any focuses that I want to, that you would like to see me bring up in the next few classes so far as strength and conditioning is concerned. I think um, one thing that uh, for women is important is um, to really work with your body more, especially in terms of your cycle, um, because it's just, we, we tend to want to push through it and that's fine. Like you totally can, especially when it comes to performance. But um, if for some reason you're trying and you are like, uh, my body just won't let me, um, that's okay. Uh, your body is telling you something. It's telling you to, it's, it, I like to think of my period as the, my biological vacation. My body is like forcing me to just chill out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I think I'm gonna incorporate more lighter resistance um, workouts like once a month. Um, I don't know if it'll align with you and your body's cycle and what it's telling you to do, but it might, who knows. Uh, I just think it's important to bring some more restorative things back and um, maybe even switch it up from being mostly lower body or upper body or core or whatever we're doing and just kind of make sure that our body's always adapting and we're always kind of answering what its needs are. So uh, with that being said, um, what would you guys like to see in these next strength and conditioning classes? What do you need more of? Anybody? Kathy. Uh, I'd like some more flexibility in my hips um, because I have very tight, everything's very tight actually. I'm very inflexible in general. But I think the most challenging thing for me is hips because that's so important for jujitsu, like being able to bump people off of you and things. It's really just challenging for me. I just, I feel like when I raise my hips off the ground, it doesn't go very far <laughs> compared to people. And I just, anything I can do to like increase flexibility and any kind of movements that might be helpful for, so I don't forget all the jujitsu I learned over the years. I feel like if I'm not practicing it and not constantly doing it, I'm just gonna forget stuff. And I just feel like a lot of the move, I've been doing a little dummy work with, you know, obviously with Shaw, with you know, classes, but also on my own, just practicing like how to move around a person, like try to move from side to side, or go from mount to side control, and sliding around a lot, just pretend, remember how to do all that stuff, because I just feel like I've forgotten, already feel like I'm, I'm losing everything, because I don't have anyone to roll with. Um, you know, or even a you know a human dummy. You know, it's not quite having the same having a, a dummy that's lying there. So yeah. it's, so it's hard. I can't. And also, I can't do a lot of the stuff I'd love to do, like to practice. Like I really need to drill things, reg, you know, on a regular basis to even get it to work at all anytime. So that's really also hard. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, anything I can work with the hips and flexibility and strength, and um, maybe some movements could be incorporated that would be reminiscent of jujitsu. <laughs> so yeah, just, so I'll, I'll, I'll definitely bring back jujitsu moves back into our Monday class. If you, uh, I, I'm not sure if this has been helping uh, Sarah and Amy, but during my hallway jujitsu class, they uh, tend to bring their dummies. And if I'm de demonstrating a move and drilling it on my partner, then they're drilling the moves with me. And I'm able to critique them on their dummy. Obviously, they're not getting the feedback that they would normally get from a live partner, but I hope it, at least it's helpful for some of their retention of what I'm teaching, too. And um, I'm not sure, if, have you guys been drilling any of those things on your own, Amy and Sarah? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, what, it's been a couple weeks since that guillotine class, but I'm, I'm definitely have been drilling that and still working on that. Good, good, awesome. How about you, Amy? Uh, yeah, I've been drilling it, trying it as well. Um, no idea how it'll work on a real person, but. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, so we'll, that's, that's just like the kicker. 
is just getting a real person, a real dummy that you can work with. Um, for the movement, I will definitely bring back more range of motion exercises. Does everybody own a Swiss ball? Who, who doesn't own a Swiss ball? I don't know what that is. Oh. Okay, let me I'll be right back. A, a balance ball? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Some people call them a yoga ball. Some people call them a balance ball. Thumbs up if you thumbs up if you have it. Okay, so everybody who's not thumbsing up right now, big investment piece for your jujitsu solo jujitsu training, especially when it comes to side control and balance. Um, this is going to be really critical in do that feedback. So. If we can get everybody in class having one of these, even you, Tirza, even though you don't do jujitsu, you can still get a lot out of just balance and hip mobility workouts with this. And they're not that expensive either. You can get them at Target easy. Don't get the small one like I have. You want to get the medium to large size Swiss ball. Um, and this ball, we'll do some Swiss ball drills for your game. Anybody else, uh, anybody else want to see anything? Um, any, any comments, recommendations, ads for this uh, athletic conditioning class? Yeah, I could really use some strength, like just generally more strength and conditioning for my back because I, you know, working from my couch, lots of back pain. Okay, so more strength and conditioning for your back. Let me, let me And you have the pull-up bar, right, um, Jennifer? So you do, you have a yes, pull-up bar? Uh, yes, but I use it for stretching and not pull-ups because I can't do a pull-up. Okay, perfect. So this is, I'm, this is a recommendation for all of you guys. I'll point the camera to my um, pull-up bar setup outside. So the motion. Someone learning to play drums? Oh, uh, that's my partner, Nancy. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I thought it was the radio. Uh, no, she's, she's playing downstairs. It's, far, it's not even the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this sounds pretty good. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's see here. Back. For those of you guys who are struggling to do a pull up, we want to start with these inverted rows. So um, pull-ups, it really has a lot to do. Oh, here's my camera. Pull-ups have a lot to do with your core strengthening, your ability to um, hold your core in one position, and also scapular retraction. So when I say scapular retraction, I mean your ability to pull your shoulders back and down. We don't want to be pulling from here with our shoulders in our ears. We really want to pull our shoulders down, pop our chest. See how when I do this, my chest is in, my chest comes up, and then I'm pulling and squeezing my back muscles together. And I want to hold that. So if you're struggling to do a pull up, all you're going to do, start out with, is just holding your body in a hang an inverted hang. Your feet will be planted on the ground. I'm gonna move this camera so I can make sure I can see myself. There it is. Here I am. I'm here. Feet planted on the ground. You get my grip. It can be either overhand grip or underhand grip. It doesn't matter. They work different muscles, but they're still going to strengthen your back. And then you're going to walk your feet out into a plank. 
pull your shoulders back and then just hold. Right? Don't even row. Just hold here. You want to get your body used to holding that position for at least 50 seconds, 20 to 50 seconds. And then when you're, um, the more strength you get in, start rowing. You can start pulling yourself. But don't, don't start with a full pull up. Start with your feet planted on the ground in an inverted row and pull from there. That's a great back strengthening exercise. What if you have a pull up bar? If you have a pull up bar and you have that pull up bar over there, too high. Too high for you. Thank you. So, off the ground and do something? No, no, no. Get those, uh, use your T Rex setup. So if you have your, uh, you know, the bed sheets, not the bands that you use on your door chairs because they're elastic. So you can use your bed sheets and then row from there. So you have your inverted row in that position. Anything else? Any other additions? No? All right. Well, I look forward to seeing all of your faces, hopefully, on Wednesday at 5 p.m. for our hallway jujitsu class. It's uh, Jackie's day. She chose the, uh, what we'll be learning for the week. Um, sounds like we're going to be going all over arm drags and shrimping quite a lot in that class. So if you do have a dummy, bring your dummy. We'll be able to do some of those drills together. And um, I'll be able to look at the video camera and correct all of you guys as we're doing it too. All right. Um, this Anybody else have anything to say before we part, part, part? Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Thanks, Vaughn. Thanks, Vaughn. Take care, y'all. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Snowflake. Bye. <laughs>